Assalamualaikum and good day. In this video, we're going to learn more basic scripting in GSP for web application. So we're going to cover three subtopics. First one is GSP predefined variables. Second one is GSP directive, and the third one is GSP L tag. Let's start with predefined variables or implicit object in GSP. So you can use variables in GSP to simplify code in GSP expression and scriptlets. You are supplied with 8 automatically defined variables, sometimes we call it as an implicit object. So they are request, response, out, session, application, config, page context, and page. So let's start with request. So what is request? Request object is an instance of a javax.servlet.http.http servlet request. Each time a client requests a page, the GSP in JFL creates any object to represent that request. So the request object provides methods to get the HTTP header information, including form data, cookies, and also HTTP methods. Here is an example for a request object that is associated with the HTTP servlet request object. So we'll use request here. So this is a get parameter method and you have a parameter here. Next, let's look at what is predefined variable response. So the response object is an instance of a javax.servlet.http.http servlet response object. The response object also defines the interfaces that deal with creating new HTTP headers. Through this object, the JSP programmer can add new cookies or date stamps, HTTP status codes, and etc. So here are examples on how to use response object that we use it to call the send redirect method to send response back to the client. So we want to send response to the client, so we use the send redirect method by using the response object. So you put the URL for JSP2 in JSP1 page and after the JSP process this code, so it will redirect the page 1 to page 2 and display back to the client. Now let's learn about predefined variables out. So the out implicit object is an instance of a javax.servlet.jsp.jsp writer object and it is used to send content in a response. So the JSP writer object contains most of the same methods as the java.io.printwriter class. So here an example where the out object is used with the print line method to display the result to the browser. Next, let's learn about predefined variable session. So the session object is an instance of javax.servlet.http http session and behaves exactly the same way the session object behaves under Java Servlet. So basically, the session object is used to track client session between client requests. Here an example of JSP code that use session to set the attribute value. So as you can see, I declare string u name equal to request.get parameter input name. And then I use out object and here I use session object. So basically I want to set the attribute with u name that I get from the request.get parameter input name. So this is how I do it. Session.set attribute and then the session name and the variable name. Next, let's look at predefined variable for application and config. So first, well, let's look at the application object where it's a direct wrapper around the servlet context object for the generated servlet and in reality an instance of a JavaX servlet servlet context. This object is a representation of the JSP page through its entire life cycle. Second, let's look at the config. So the config object is an extension of javax.servlet.servlet.config and it is a direct wrapper around the servlet config object. This object allows the JSP programmer access to the servlet or JSP engine initialization parameter such as the path or file location. So here are example how we use object config in JSP page. So we use the config dot and we use the method that actually 
supported by the servlet config class or interface. So get servlet name is actually the supported method in the Java X.servlet.servlet config interface. Right, let's look at pretty fun variable page. So this object is an actual reference to the instance of the page. It can be thought of as an object that represents the entire GSP page. Here are examples how we use object in GSP page. So basically, we use the page like this, GSP include page. Then this is a value whereby always we put a URL of the page itself. So this is for header and this is for footer for the main page.gsp. Next, let's look at the uh, last predefined variable that is page context. So the page context object is an instance of a javax.server.jsp page context object. The page context object is used to represent the entire JSP page. So this object is, is intended as the means to access information about the page while avoiding most of the implementation details. So these objects store references to the request and response object for each request. So the application, config, session and part objects are derived by assessing attributes of this object. So here are example how we can use the page context object in the JSD page. So we use remove attribute method here that is supported in the javax.server.jsp page context interface. Now, let's learn another subtopic which is directive in JSP. The JSP directive is a statement that gives the JSP engine information about the JSP page. There are three most commonly used directives which are page, include and tatlib. For example, if your JSP page uses a Java class from a package other than the java.lang package, you have to use a directive to import this package. So the general syntax for a JSP directive is as follows. So basically, you need to have alias, directive, attribute, and the value. So this is only for one directive. If you need to use more than one directive, so you can have the syntax something like this. Like, let's look into detail about the JSP directive. First, page. Page directive lets you provide information for the page, such as importing classes, and setting up content type. The page directive can appear anywhere in the JSP file. Second, for directive include, let's, let's you insert a file to the servlet when the page is translated to a servlet. The include directive must be placed where you want the file to be inserted. So finally, the directive tag lib let you define custom tags in your JSP pages. So let's move on to the JSTL, which is the taglib directive. So what is JSTL? JSTL stands for JSP Standard Tag Library, which is a collection of a JSP custom tags that developed by the Java community process. So JSTL allow you to program your JSP pages using tags rather than the scriptlet code that most JSP programmers are already custom to. So JSTL can do nearly everything that the regular JSP scripted code can do. So there are five common library JSTL that programmers will use in their daily JSP pages, which is core, formatting, SQL, XML, and functions. Let's look further. So now let's learn about the um, some of it of core. So core is actually to provide support for iteration, conditional logic, URL, forward or redirect response, whereas JSTL formatting is to provide support for formatting numbers and also dates. So these are example code for the tag lib. So you start with alias, tag lib and the URI. So the URL must be um, correct whereby you need to put the uh, direct URI and then where is the library located. So for core, you need to have C-O-R-E and prefix C. So in the JSP code, we will use the C as the start tag and the rest of it. Same goes here for formatting. So you need to have the FMT at the end of the URI 
in order to use the prefix FMT in the GSP code. Next, let's look at GSTL for SQL. So, actually, to provide support for interaction with databases and to run SQL queries, whereas XML is to provide support for XML documents and transforming XML data into display format. So, basically, tagli for SQL, you have the SQL URI and also the prefix SQL. So, in the GSP code, you can use SQL start tag SQL and tag for your GSP. Same goes with XML. So XML, we use URL XML at the end and the prefix is X. So let's look at the last one which is function. So GSTL function are used to manipulate numbers, strings and many more. And here are some examples of GSTL function that are supported in GSP. So as you can see, you have um, this is syntax. So the prefix fn and then this is the url for functions and then it's all the function that supported and you have many more on the website so let's look at the fn contains fn you know case fn and swift fn escape xml and also fn index of all right i think that's all for now for more detail on gsp for web development please read chapter 42 in my google site thank you